Welcome back to my channel. This is Nasu with Fight for Kidneys. Today it's a new day. We will be looking at access. Now, in our last channel that I probably you have watched, we talked about that you have, you know, your kidneys have failed. And now your doctors are talking to you about getting dialysis or starting dialysis. So what's next? Before you can start dialysis, you need access. And when your doctor comes to you and talks to you about starting dialysis, they will give you options because there are options there. And this is the point where you need to pay attention be key and ask questions because the option that you choose is very, very important because each option has its benefits. Depending on the kind of life you live, if you're working athletic, um, have children, have um, troubles, like doing all these things, those, op those things will make you decide what options you choose. So you hear your doctor say, you can choose home dialysis or you can choose in center or what they call dialysis clinic. You go there and somebody takes care of you or help you. But when you hear home, you are so empowered. This is where you are doing the treatment yourself. You'll be well-trained. You'll be comfortable to do it at your own home, at your own comfort, at your own time. And then with all these options, you need a type of access. Today we'll be looking at three type of dialysis access. We'll start with the catheter. The catheter is the one that is pressed right if it's an emergency. If you need a dialysis right away, you have gone to your doctor or you have gone to the emergency room and they tell you you need dialysis. At that time, they will press a catheter. And that catheter can be pressed depending on the emergency. You can have a quick one that is pressed in your groin. You can also have one on your neck or one on your chest. And the doctors will talk to you about all these access. So let me show you the first thing about uh, the, the cavity. So this is uh, for demonstration purposes, and this is not exactly how it looks, but when it's outside, this is how it will be two tubes that are out. But these tubes, when it comes here, it's pretty, when it's, it comes here, but it connects. So when it's coming to your chest, it's like one tube, but outside there are two tubes, but inside it's a one tube. And it's pressed in your right atrium, and that I have them blue coded, uh, color coded. That means you have one that is get blood from your system to the dialysis machine, and the blue ones bring blood from the dialysis machine to your to to back to your body, and it keeps doing that throughout. And then you have um, and this is you here. This is a hemodialysis because there's blood in it that's blood hemo means blood then you might hear another options that you might have discussed with your doctor and you chose peritoneal dialysis or you might hear people say pd and this one is where they put a catheter it's not outside it's inside but for demonstration purposes it's yes it's outside so this tube they put a tube that goes inside your abdominal cavity and then it has a where it comes out, part of it comes out. And all these tubes also at the end of the day, when you're doing, they all have like caps to protect them. And the other option of hemodialysis is 
either the doctor might say you need a, a graft or a fistula and this what happens here so and this can be pressed in either arm and doctor will look or they might see check your thigh if you don't have any veins and they might check your uh, uh, your thighs they might check on your chest but this is if you have no options on your arms um so this is what is called a graft again this is created inside so the doctor or the surgeon they go inside and connect your artery and your vein they hook this thin um tube inside but it's connected with your arteries and your vein and this is where most of the time this no most of the time this is where the the uh, insertions of the needle or cannulation of the needle will happen then this is the other option that is called a fistula and this is where they join your artery and your veins together and they create a loop where now the that they you can get the cannulations so it create a way a pressure to build up for the blood to um to be for the blood to be cleaned and your surgeon will be able to explain them further so this is just a demonstration showing what a graft is it can be here it can still be right here but i just wanted to show you both of them how they are so let's talk about this so this one takes about um uh two to three two to three weeks to to mature and um and this one takes about six to eight weeks the cavita can be used right away and the PD catheter, if you choose to use peritoneal dialysis or the PD, that catheter in your abdomen can be used within a few days or up to by two weeks. So it can be used right away within a few days or up to two weeks before it can be used. Um, all these accesses are important. And I would like to say that depending on all, on which access you it need you have they all need care we have to make sure that's your lifeline we have to make sure that we protect them if you have a catheter you have to make sure you keep it dry make sure you are checking it make sure ensure you're talking with your nurses whenever if you do dialysis at home and you're using a catheter make sure when you change the dressing make sure that you are checking it for leadness any drainage any change of skin color anything that you see abnormal because you see it every time that you need to call your nurse and let them know hey i see something different same thing for your pd catheter you have to check it make sure if you see any drainage any lightness warm to touch you know those are signs of infections make sure you let your nurse know right away if you have a fistula or a graft they also need to make sure we are checking them we have to fall in love with all our accesses because this is our lifeline that's your lifeline you need you need those treat you need those access to be able to have treatments so make sure you're checking your arm your arm for any drainage any redness any swearing any and anything unusual you have even if you have doubt you need to let your nurse know or your doctor know then make sure if you have a if if a fistula or a graft make sure you're not lifting heavy things on that arm make sure you're not wearing tight clothing make sure when you go to the doctor or any doctor for whatever reasons let them know that you have a, a dialysis access on that arm they should not be taking blood pressure from the, that arm and they should not be drawing blood from that arm make sure you are watching for all those things make sure you are protecting it and i would like to say about because we had talked earlier in our previous channels or in my previous channel we had talked about that you know now you you're getting to dialysis you have been following your nephrologist or your doctor and they have been telling you that you need dialysis down the road 
please talk to them at that point you should start asking them and talking to them about the kind of access that what what how which dialysis are you gonna be having because that's a key question don't wait until like when it's too late and then it's an emergency dialysis and you can't be able to make decisions because you're so sick and it's so much information coming in. You are at the hospital. You are not seeing people that are you are familiar with. But when you are following your nephrologist and your doctor, you need to start talking to them about your dialysis options. If they have said yes you're gonna need dialysis start talking to them about your dialysis option make sure you are well informed so you so you can make an informed decision where you feel you're advocating for yourself you're choosing the right treatment for you and you're choosing it when your mind is clear when you're not stressed out when you are you can be able to have enough time to talk with your family all your relatives and let them be part of you to decide what's really right for you and in that time if you choose to do dialysis either at home or at incent or down the road you might now start getting the, you may you start having that conversation about what kind of access and most of the time you can get a fistula pressed that's the one that takes six to week, six, um, six to eight weeks to mature. So you're doing this when you're not sick, when you're still at home, you're getting to know your arm, you're falling in love with your arm, and you're also feeling like you're seeing every, every development of that arm. And I forgot to say one thing. Also, you need to make sure for your accesses, you're feeling it and you're listening to it and feeling it. And your doctor or your nurses, when you get the placement, they will be able to tell you what to listen to. You start feeling those thrill, you know. And now that you have the access, let's talk about, um, let's talk about those options. If you're here listening to me, it's very, very important for the like, the treatment you choose. Home is always the best. It keeps you flexible. It gives you, it's convenient. It makes you feel much better. You have quality of life. You still enjoy your life. Nothing much changes. You travel as you used to travel before. You work as you used to work before. You pray with your kids as you do before. And you, you the dialysis, the treatment, you're not running around the dialysis treatment, but you are running around the, you're not, your life is not around dialysis, but you're making your, you are you're making your life you are living your life the normal way if the dialysis itself it's not controlling you you are controlling your life i thank you i appreciate you guys for 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 watching this channel please stay tuned for the next one and i hope we get to learn so much and just remember one out of three adults are at risk for kidney failure and so many people are suffering from kidney disease and most of people don't know so when you talk to the loved ones when you talk to people especially those people who have hypertension high blood pressure please talk to them about um about talking to their doctors regarding um kidney health asking about their um asking their doctors that they need to to know about their um kidney status and then if they choose whichever modality and you're already in that modality please let them know they can make those decisions and whenever they learn that they need dialysis let them start talking with their provider as soon as possible so that they can start making those decisions so that they don't feel overwhelmed I thank you again for watching. Stay tuned for the next one. And I hope you live a thriving life. If you're in dialysis, this is not the end of it. Life is too beautiful out there. It's how you look at it. 
you can see life as half empty or half full. It's all about how you look at life. Don't let dialysis control your life. You can control dialysis. I thank you again. Thank you for the time. Let's keep bringing this awareness. Let's keep educating ourselves. And remember, I'm just here to inform, reinforce. I'm not a doctor. I do not give advice. I do not give medical counseling. I'm just here to reinforce the importance of knowing ourselves, knowing yourself, advocating for yourself when you have to go through dialysis or before you get to dialysis because you are the best advocate for yourself. Nobody else can do it. You can do the best because you are the only person who can tell your own story. You can write your own story. Nobody else can write your story and don't let anybody else write your story. You can change your narrative. You can change the narrative and you can change your story the way you want it. So thank you again and take care and God bless you.